So you see all the Jedi action happening. You want to be a part of it. But the problem is... Well, well, we got seven. And when characters like Cyan, Enfys, Nest, and Basil Sean come out, I like to come out with a video to talk about how a character is at three stars. Are they still good at a low star count? And in this video today, we're going to talk about the differences between a three star and a seven star Basil Sean, as well as show some footage of all Jedi going up against Palpatine, Treya, and showing how much fun it is even at a three star count for Basil Sean. First thing we need to talk about is what exactly are you missing from a three star versus a seven star Basil Sean? And the most important thing to point out is the health quite a big difference between a three star and a seven star bass lashawn at three stars you're getting 19,409 health but at seven stars gear 12 plus all that stuff you're getting 46,315 a huge gap right there and this is really important for one reason we all know that health is important so you can take a lot of hits but secondly the reason why it's so important is because bass lashawn gives protection up from her leadership ability and if you saw the emphasis nest video i made a while ago i'm and talking about she's good at three stars i told you guys that protection up is based on the max health i know it's a bit weird so because of this low max health that we have at three stars her protection up that she's going to give herself isn't quite that high i mean it's still good but it's not nearly as good as if it was seven stars gear 12 plus another important thing to note is protection obviously as you know when you go from gear 11 to gear 12 there's a pretty decent protection bump and here you're losing about eleven thousand protection if you don't get him to seven stars is gear 12 at three stars you have 32,784 protection and when you're at seven stars gear 12 it's 43,712 so again 11,000 protection before mods that's a lot of extra damage that basila could be soaking up speed is another difference but mainly there's a difference because the gear 12 plus adds plus 12 speed but at three stars gear 11 you're looking at 120 speed and seven stars gear 12 plus you're looking at 132 speed and something a bit intangible a bit abstract is offense out but I don't have the exact numbers, but at three stars versus seven stars, there is a bit of a difference for offense output. But Basilis Sean, luckily, is not meant to be a big damage dealer. She's meant to be a support granting buffs to everyone, and it's really all coming down to her leadership initiative. This is why she will be good at three stars or four stars if you buy the pack. Spoiler alert. And the reason why it's so important, because when you max out her leader ability, which is very important if you're competing against Palpatine and all those other big Sith characters in the top end of Arena, you really need to max it out because when you give the zeta ability you're getting plus 150 percent tenacity with protection up as well as the addition of jedi tanks taunting at the beginning very powerful for old ben or general kenobi to get a pre-taunt when the battle starts always resisting pain for the most part shock stuns that is what is making the jedi and basilis sean so good but let's move into battle now so we already kind of outlined what are the actual numeric differences but we need to see how things are in action because basilis sean it doesn't really matter much about her it's what she's doing for everyone else around her she's a great support character for jedi and probably the best or actually the best jedi leader i'm just gonna say i think she is the best jedi leader overall because as we're gonna see we're gonna get so many turns out of the gate uh, there it's just it looks like we're just non-stop getting turns and it's gonna be forever till they finally get a turn for themselves let's get this going battle meditation old ben i think this lineup that i'm using right now is going to be one of the best overall jedi team teams around town now of course general kenobi works well but i think it's awesome showing teams that don't require general kenobi uh because that's a character that not many people have and furthermore we're going to show some jedi teams that don't require hermit yoda because i know a lot of you guys don't have hermit yoda but i'm happy to say there are a variety of full jedi teams that that do very very well there goes darth trail let's move on to palpatine uh let's see do we need some foresight let's top us off with some foresight there we go looking splendid so far there we go one hit two hits uh, there we go Thirty thousand damage just from ezra's basic right there uh, it's just it's great all the offense output the tenacity is just the biggest thing for the jedi before if you guys recalled when i did my initial um gameplay for uh what's it called for basila and jolie bindo the problem was it's like oh man there's no way to control sai and we, we, we constantly got pain but once they went in there and fixed uh, her leadership pretty much we're resisting everything man what should i do how much terminator do i have here we can probably oh uh, you know what? let's not play around let's just take out papa team just to be safe Fifteen thousand damage for a three-star character that's not horrendous uh by any means now we just gotta work on nihilus here Big damage, come on. So <laughs> Man, I mean, 
you guys have to get on Ezra. I know lot, that didn't even sound right, but I know a lot of you guys were like, oh, who can I use in place of Ezra? Ezra is a free to play character, guys. Please, 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 please. You need to farm Ezra for many reasons, besides the fact he is probably the strongest Jedi right now under Basil Shan's lead, probably the highest damage output as well. Uh, just, and he's also needed for Thrawn. You can use him for Emperor Palpatine. He has a great ship, too. I mean, you got to get Ezra. I know, you know, maybe you don't have him, but he's so easily accessible. There's not many excuses not to have him, especially if you want to run a full Jedi team. You need Ezra for all that extra damage output. So, I mean, this is pretty much game, set, match, guys. We're looking... We're looking good. We're just going to kind of take our time with the Scion here. 37,000 damage. Not a single pain in sight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just so much fun. I wish I can give Yoda uh, these bonuses, but we're going to give it to uh, Scion. It's game set match. Pop up that taunt, old Ben. Let's call Bastila to assist. Guys, I mean, being able to beat a team like Palpatine, Treya, Scion, Nihilus, with a team like this that has three very accessible Jedi, a three-star character, and granted Hermit Yoda is a bit difficult to obtain, but it's so impressive to see how a simple bug fix completely reinvigorated the Jedi faction. So let's move on to the next battle. We're going to change up. Let's take out Hermit Yoda because I know a lot of you guys don't have him. And let's have some fun with some underused Jedi that we don't quite see happen. So we're going to go into battle with this a little less damage out, but because we don't have Grandmasters training with us, but now we have a double taunting, a double taunting tank. If you can if you can work a double taunting tank in your lineup, it's a very very powerful team So let's do this. Let's open a battle do our two attacks back to back. There we go battle meditations up and running Get that mind trick up, baby. Uh, Papa team is able to resist it, but that's not a problem at all Let's start hammering away at Darth Treya. All right remove some turn meter looking good and let's call Yoda to the assist so he gets all the bonuses and hopefully he gets to keep it for a little bit. All right. So what we're going to do is we don't need foresight. We don't need any of the protection up right now. So we're just going to get some more taunt out of uh, Kanan Jarrus. I mean, let's just give it to Ezra. I mean, there's no he, he also cleanses, but we don't really need it that much. Let's call Yoda to assist. Oh, oh, yikes. Oh, here we go. That should finish off Treya. Oh, not quite yet. That should do it. There we go. And now let's get another taunt. So we have. Oh, man, we technically, I mean, uh, Kanan loses his taunt once you strip it away. But between his taunt and old Ben's taunt, there, that's a lot of taunts for the other team to go through. And Scion can't do his AoE buff the spell because he had that ability block. Oh, and would you look at that? He actually got stunned. That's very rare with the Basilisk Shans lead. But as you see, even with high tenacity, there's still a slight chance that uh, you could get a debuff applied. Come on, one hit. To it, Palpatine's down for the count. Let's land a stun on Scion so we can keep our buffs around. Beautiful. Sometimes those stuns don't stick, but sometimes we get lucky. There we go. One attack. Let's keep working on Nihilus. Should get a decent hit. 24,000. There we go. Old Ben keeps his taunt up. He lost, he, that Zeta is really good on uh, Old Ben. If you're looking to run Old Ben in the top end of Arena, the one Zeta to look into is for sure his taunt ability. So he can regain the taunt when he loses the first one. All right, come on. Almost done here. And let's call Yoda to the assist. That was a little overkill, but I just wanted to give the turn meter to Yoda. And now we're pretty much done. I mean, Kane and Jerry, this is a, such an easily free to play team to run an arena. And it's just crazy how much work it actually does. I mean, I'm really impressed with how this lineup, it's just, it's so crazy how this can be a legend, two legendary characters a and three of the most difficult Sith to acquire in the game. It really speaks, it speaks a ton on how powerful the Jedi are with Basilisk Sean. All right, this is pretty much it. We're gonna win this battle. I'm gonna fast forward it to the next battle. Let's try to find some other interesting Jedi that get pretty underused. Let's talk about Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, Qui-Gon Jinn, he's kind of an underused Jedi, but if we're showing Jedi teams that don't require Hermit Yoda or some pay-to-play characters or very difficult characters to acquire, I figured, what the heck, let's show Qui-Gon Jinn because we don't see much love for him and he does provide some benefits for this team mainly what i'm looking for out of him is to call people to assist that are pretty good i really want him to call ezra or yoda let's see who can who who, uh, who will call there we go we got yoda to assist that's pretty much his main thing and he grants damage bonuses if a jedi assists him so that's always nice to see uh we didn't get that many we didn't get that much turn meter removal with uh with this, uh, with, with our opening move from Old Ben, I was hoping we can remove some turn meter, but we should be fine. Scion's going to strip all the buffs away, so no sense in giving it to Yoda. I want to give it to Ezra so we can get some extra damage on Treya right now. Oh, come on, Yoda. Come on. And there goes.
was Trey and no self-cleansing. So we stopped Cyan from cleansing himself and uh, get, removing everything. So we should be good. Uh, that should be the good move. I mean, 70% of the time, I like to give Yoda the rally ability from Basla. So eventually he can share it with everyone. But, but when, you look, when you're looking at the field, sometimes, sometimes it's not always optimal to give Grandmaster Yoda the uh the rally bonuses because you might be like in a situation like where i was where you're seeing oh geez you see cyan is so close to taking a turn he might self cleanse he might not have any ability block and you know he's going to remove all those buffs so in some situations you want to give it to let's say ezra for extra damage output but in some other circumstances if everything's looking good give it to yoda because eventually he'll share it with everyone else with his battle meditation so you just got to time it out right but overall there is a time and place to use uh rally with the uh, grandmaster yoda over ezra and vice versa let's land a stun on thrawn oh man still one of my biggest gripes about this character yes i know if i use the basic she she's more likely to land an ability block but the point of having the stun in her kit is to actually apply the stun if someone actually does want to spend all this time and money into basla sean you kind of want the stun ability to work it's kind of upsetting that they uh that it doesn't work at all oh let's see not at all but it's it's sometimes it doesn't stick uh let's come on keep hammering away at nihilus should be good here we just need a nice big hit from ezra and we should be good to go come on ezra ah oh, not enough damage come on one two one more hit should do the job and all those critical hits made cyan really angry but we should be good let's move some turn meter and it's pretty much game set match all right oh come on there we go all right so there's another lineup guys that we won right there i mean uh Kawhi gun gym offers a lot of interesting stuff but i do have to admit even though we're kind of having fun we're trying some underused Jedi and how they work against a very difficult team. I do feel the reduction of arena viability, mainly because when you're missing out on Hermit Yoda, you're missing out on a lot of damage. You're missing out on a lot of tenacity, a lot of bonus attacks that are a bit more targeted. I don't quite like that Qui-Gon Jinn just calls someone random to assist. I'd rather uh, kind of pick someone else. Um, you know, sometimes he calls old Ben to assist and you might not want that. Here we go. All right, there we go. Another battle won. I think we might have time for one more team to show full Jedi team that doesn't require Hermit Yoda easily accessible but hopefully you guys kind of see at this point three battles in that uh Basla Sean even at three stars you're getting a lot of use out of her and it just really guys it's, it's all just coming down to our leader ability so in case you weren't fully convinced that Basla Sean's gonna be all right at three stars for the last battle you're seeing right now I tossed in Jedi Knight Guardian in the fifth slot and even though the Jedi Knight Guardian is one of the worst characters in the game under a Basla Sean lead we still see that the Jedi can win and even a Jedi Knight Guardian a very bad Jedi was still actually providing a lot of benefits to the team it's quite odd <laughs> so a few points to reiterate before we end this video is Bass LaShawn good at three stars and the answer is an obvious yes she is the best Jedi leader in the game and you just need to have the Zeta ability to make her and Jedi tick but hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and did find it helpful with understanding the differences between a three star and a seven star Bass and seeing all the flexibility that you can use when composing a full Jedi team. If you want to see some more full Jedi teams, check out the previous video I show characters like Ayla Sakura and Anakin Skywalker as well. It's just so fun to put in all these underused Jedi and still beating one of the most difficult teams that has that have been sitting in arena for six months now. But if you did enjoy the video, go ahead, leave me a like, comment down below, and subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And until the next video. Party Richter, party Richter, down, down, down. Party Richter, party Richter, down, down, down.